One of the outgoing newcomers was a rookie named George Rogers, who came to town under pressure and proceeded to make history. Rogers arrived in New Orleans as the Heisman Award winner and number one pick in the draft, then more than lived up to his billing by gaining more yards than any other rookie runner in history and leading the entire NFL in rushing with 1,674 yards. Rodgers was both spectacular and consistent, starting all 16 games and averaging over 100 yards in each. Rogers simply ran away from the Heisman curse as a star was born and Bum Phillips found the cornerstone for his foundation. Well, I'd say he played about as well as any rookie has ever played the game. You know, as far as the act of running the football, taking it and starting somewhere with it and then making a decision, he's got about as quick a decision making. In fact, he's probably the quickest I've ever seen that I've ever had that at making his mind up what he's going to do and going and doing it. He's got the same vision that all great backs have. He can start somewhere and then he'll see daylight and he'll go get it. George continued his remarkable season, finishing as the top rusher in the NCAA with 1,894 yards. And in December, he became the first player from the University of South Carolina to win the Heisman Trophy. I was happy for South Carolina, you know, my teammates. You know, I didn't know if all the credit, you know, a lot of credit went toward me, but believe me right now, you win the Heisman Trophy with a team. You don't win it by an individual, not at all. The success on the field didn't end in Columbia for George. The New Orleans Saints selected him first overall in the 1981 NFL Draft, and he rewarded them by leading the league in rushing during the 81 season. His NFL career was shortened by injuries, but still lasted seven years and included a Super Bowl championship with the 1987 Washington Redskins. But for all the success George had on the field, he faced his fair share of demons off him. Drug use nearly derailed his life after football. Easily, I could have easily died from using drugs. I could have very easily died. In some incidents, I didn't do the right thing. And I wish I could change that, but I can't. But I'm a better person than that now. If I, maybe if I didn't have to go through it, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have known. But you know, you got to grow up sometimes. And I think more, more than anything, I think I've, uh, I've grown up. I'm, you know, I'm a 57 year old old man now, and, I, and I'm loving life. Today, George's goal is to take the lessons he's learned and have an impact on those less fortunate. His vehicle, the George Rogers Foundation. And what I do is I help first generation students go to school. I'm a first generation in my family to go to school. And I came up with that back in 1992. And I wanted, I wanted to do something else to help kids go to school who didn't have the opportunity to, uh, to play sports or to uh, 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 do the things that I did. Carolina's most famous Gamecock football player came back to Columbia to finish his degree. Now, as a graduate and an ambassador for the university, Wherever he goes, those in Garden Black give thanks to the man known simply as Big George.